the entrance and the farm. Upon a lofty throne I saw a man seated, whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison. Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we enter into these sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let's be seated now as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let us be on our guard while the promise of entering into his rest remains, that none of you seem to have failed. For in fact, we have received the good news just as our ancestors did. But the word that they heard did not profit them. For they were not united in faith with those who listened. For we who believe enter into the wreck, into that rest, just as he has said. As I swore in my, in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And yet his works were accomplished at the foundations of the world. For he has spoken somewhere about the seventh day in this manner. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in the previously mentioned place, they shall not enter into my rest. Therefore, let us strive to enter into that rest so that no one may fall after the same example of disobedience. The Word of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord. What we have heard and know and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and His strength. Do not forget the works of the Lord. That they too may rise and declare to their sons, and they should put their hope in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. And do not be like their fathers, a generation 
wayward and rebellious. A generation that kept not its heart steadfast, nor its spirit faithful towards God. Do not forget the of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door, and he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. Unable to get near Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him. After they had broken through, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, excuse me, he said to him, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, Why does this man speak this way? He is blaspheming. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking to themselves. So he said, Why are you thinking such things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, pick up your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins on earth, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your mat, and go home. He rose, picked up his mat at once, and went away in the sight of everyone. They were all astonished and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. If any one of your priests here ever gets so popular that you are tempted to open up our roof, please don't. Just knock at the door. In the old days, they had a back entrance steps that would come up to the top and the roof had sort of wooden planks across the top and across the wooden planks there would be some sort of grass covering what we may see today as insulation and so these four men who were carrying the paralytic said we got to get to Jesus somehow we have to get to Jesus and they had this crazy thought let's go to the top and let's lower them down And imagine you're inside, you're thinking, you know what? That body is going to come right on top of me. It doesn't look like there's any room here, but people are going to start to push away, and they're going to make room. And the most powerful statement here, I think, for me, of course, Jesus forgives his sins, but something that we need to hold on to. When Jesus saw their faith not the paralytic's faith when Jesus saw the faith of the four men who went to such extreme measures to bring their loved one maybe a brother 
a neighbor, someone who doesn't have anyone else in his life, and they said, we're going to bring you to Jesus. And Jesus saw the faith of these four men, and that's what impressed him. So when you come today, you come not only for yourself, but you carry the paralytics of your family here. Those who will not come. Those who cannot come. But you bring them before the Lord. And guess what? The Lord will see your faith. You think, well, but they're at home and maybe your kids have left the faith and they'll never... Uh, don't give up. Because the Lord sees your faith. That's why you keep bringing them to the Lord. You think, Lord... I'm going to open up that roof again at Mass today, and I'm going to bring my spouse before you, my children, my grandchildren. Whoever it is that you need to bring before the Lord, that you carry them with your love, with your faith, with your devotion, saying, Lord, I believe in you, that you can do all things, that you have power, that you have authority. And Jesus, to show this power and authority, he says, your sins are forgiven. Now, they don't say anything, the scribes. But Jesus knows their hearts, just like he knows our hearts. He says, which is it easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise and pick up your mat and go home. He said, because you can't just forgive his sins, because that's only the work and the power of God. Exactly. Right? Jesus is showing the true divinity that he has, who he is, that he's God. He's the Son of God. He says, but because they wouldn't be able to see that, they will see that if he rises, that he gets up from his mat and walks away, they will see that power as well. He wants the people to believe in him. Not that it's just a miracle worker. He's trying to evoke faith. He wants us to believe in who He is and where He's from and where He wants us to be. So when we come before the Lord each day at Mass, of course we bring ourselves, but bring those that we place before the altar in just a moment. We'll put the bread and wine upon the altar. I want you to carry symbolically to the altar those who need to be carried. Not to do it just today, but every day. Don't give up in that pursuit and think, I'm going to bring him here over and over. And I know you have, and I want to encourage you. That was from yesterday from Hebrews. Encourage each other today whilst today. You need to be encouraged not to give up. That's the message of hope that Jesus gives to us. Not to give up. Because I know that you have faith. And so when we come to Mass, Lord, increase my faith. Strengthen me in my journey. Please rise. Let us now lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church that she will joyfully proclaim the good news, the gospel to all people and all nations. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our divided nation, that we will be united, that there will be peace, that there will be a peaceful transition in the, priest, in the, in the presidency. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our young people who are discouraged, who have lost hope, that they find truth and meaning in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, those who have lost work, for those who are depressed and despairing, we pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, in particular for Leonard Monzon, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. 
and for your special prayers that you hold in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Merciful and loving Father, we come before you with many prayers and many others who cannot be here or who choose not to be here. Lord, we lift them up to you. We bring them before you that you heal them, that you strengthen them, help them to believe in you. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the, the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. <coughs> he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. life and have it more abundantly, says the Lord. Be seated.
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.